Hello, welcome back. I'm Ed Ballou and I'm offering some more tips and tricks on the Helium network. And also this is just great general use for uh, grounding any TV antenna masts or that kind of thing that you would like to do on your roof and making it as safe and uh, as protected as possible. Uh, I will put out a disclaimer. This is the, the culmination of the knowledge I've gained to this point. This is all at your own uh, liability if you're taking these things. I am attempting to improve the videos as I learn more and I welcome the critics. Um, we're we're going to talk about a little bit of what they, what they offered uh, just in the last couple days here uh, uh, on my last video that I did. So. We're going to talk about grounding today. So you can see that there is a grounding rod right here coming down from my roof. And then this is the wire that I'm using right now to come from the antenna down to the ground. And we're going to be taking out now, this is a, a grounding rod that is done with a lot of um, uh, TV antenna setups uh, that they sell it as a as a package and you can get this on Amazon um, I, I'm gonna do try and do better. Uh, thank you for the feedback about getting getting links in the description So I'll try and drop those links in there as I can um, But we're gonna be replacing that with one of these bigger grounding rods and this is this is uh, you can't even see all of it But it is quite tall uh, I'd estimate it's probably eight feet tall um, and these, this I picked up at my local hardware store. Um, I don't even know if you can get these off Amazon. Probably. I mean, they ship a lot of stuff, but I like uh, shopping local when I can. So um, getting this at a local uh, hardware store is, is uh, along with a lot, of, a lot of the other supplies that I'll show today. So this is another example of something I got at the local hardware store. So if you're asking for links, a lot of it is tough because I'm getting it at a local hardware store. So hopefully you can find a place that, that will work for you. So let's go over all the supplies that I'm using here. So again, we're starting from the ground up. So the ground goes, grounding rod goes to this grounding wire. Uh, this is solid copper. Uh, I believe it's six, six or eight gauge. I lost the packaging, so um, feel free. I'll, I'll try and look it up and, and get some more in the comments later on. So, all right, so we go from the grounding rod to this, and there's a, usually a clamp that will clamp to your grounding rod. So I have one of those that I'll show here. And this is a lot of supplies. So one thing that you'll need to do um, is have a good cutters. And this is actually what they use for uh, barbed wire fences and stuff. Um, and so you just put the, put the wire into this little slot here and then cut it and you're good to go. So this is a great little tool, totally recommend it. All right, so you need a grounding clamp. All right, here it is. This is a grounding rod clamp, and I have five eighths. Um, I, there was a half inch one I saw that was kind of nice, but I, I wanted to go a little bit bigger. So this is all it is. So you slide this right, the grounding rod right through here, um, pull this thing out a little bit, and then you'll be able to screw it in. And then you'll want to screw this onto the grounding rod and also clamp the, the um, solid copper that's coming up from your roof. Okay, use that to connect it to the grounding rod. All right, moving on up. So now what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna affix that. Um, as far as I understand, electricians and code and all that kind of stuff likes to have things affixed to your siding of your house or whatever. So this is what I got for that. So what this does is this will, this will anchor all that, that uh, solid copper wire along the siding. Okay, moving on up. The next part is a grounding block, I believe it's called. So this is the uh, grounding block. And what this does, um, this is just an eaten one. I don't have the packaging here with me, but I'll always keep one of these on hand too. Um, these are amazing. You can just swap your your direction of your of your flathead to Phillips at any time. I love this. This is an awesome little tool, and so I just keep that in my in my pocket at all times, pretty much. So let's show the internals of this grounding block. 
again I'm an amateur at all this I'm showing you what I know today so all right here we go here's the cover that hopefully keeps a little bit of the elements out but this is where the money is right here so you're gonna send that same uh, solid copper wire that's coming through from down from your your uh, roof into this big one right here on the on this side and then you're gonna send your other things that you're gonna ground so this is for coax this is for um, your uh, lightning arresters that kind of stuff um, and you can just send it through there and um, clamp it down and then you're good to go so I'll show that wire in, in a little bit but this just affixes back on here and you're good to go so that will be mounted on the side of the house and you want it kind of in line to keep your runs. The, the entire thing with this is, is lightning is gonna go where it's gonna go. It's very fickle, as from, from all the research that I've, that I've done uh, onto some forums for um, ham radio operators, all that kind of stuff, they, um, they kind of geek out on this stuff. So I'm, I'm pulling up what they've, what they've posted. Of course, always zip ties. Zip ties are your friend, more so on the, on the mast, but um, for cable management in a pinch, or if you need to hold something, there temporarily oh man zip ties are amazing okay uh, so we got to the we've followed the grounding wire all the way up to the ground uh, grounding block now we're getting into the place of where your cable will enter the house now you can see over here is a um, where my cable TV enters and of course I don't have cable because I'm doing the over -air, over the air antenna but that enters in through this place right here. So it's a good thing to have also a grounding setup in here. And, and I haven't reviewed their setup. I hope that all cable companies are doing this. Uh, I'm not positive they are. So it's worth investigating just a little bit to see what if you need to bolster up that setup or have something different. So that should also go through your, your uh, grounding block. All right, so I'm gonna show that setup now. Um, if there's anything else in here, oh yeah. Uh, so as you're doing coax routing, this is another go good one to have. So these are um, just little clamps. You just nail them onto the siding. Um, there's also screw ones that can that can uh, that you can use. I've seen the cable company use it. Actually, it's um, there's wires coming up on the siding, and you can paint over them and stuff. Um, that's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here's another high-tech high-tech tool it will cost you a lot of money no I'm just kidding uh, this is a coat hanger a wire coat hanger that I use to poke through walls and pull out the other end uh, when I'm threading threading wires through and I even got some little string on there in case I need it so but yeah lots of lots of little little clamps and and tie downs and stuff because as far as I understand code code likes it when our electricians like it when there's um, clamps everywhere so I've got a couple clamps this would be for the like the 10 gauge wire and then this would be for the LMR 400 cable all right any other things in my bag of goodies before I show you where the LMR fund begins um, oh yeah here's another one uh, this is just some tape I've heard that there's some good stuff out there this is the professional grade I don't know if you can see that at the top but uh, this is professional grade stuff and uh, keeps out moisture and all that kind of stuff and I think it's uh oh yeah to 100 uh, whoa it goes up to 221 degrees Fahrenheit so you're gonna be pretty good to go with this stuff so that is it in my bag of goodies that I got today. All this costs about 50 bucks plus some candy for the kids to keep them company while I was looking at boring electrical stuff. So, um, oh yeah, another another good little tool to use. Uh, this is just a wire cutters, pretty standard wire cutters. It's got some stripper parts on there, but I, I like this mostly just for the cutting, but it's also lightweight um, and I can just use it whenever I need to when I'm, when I'm doing ethernet or uh, any other type of cable. So that is it for my bag of goodies. So let's remove the camera here. Again, we've moved up from the ground rug to the grounding block. And we're gonna pretend that this ground rod is already sunk in all holes. Oh, one note on that. You will definitely want to uh, research if there's any nearby uh, utilities that are coming through. 
um, call your local, you know, call before you dig people. Um, obviously, if I sunk that into uh, an electrical cable that I didn't know was there, oh boy, that would not be fun. Uh, in fact, it could be deadly. So uh, whether it's gas, whether it's electrical, uh, just call before you dig, all those kind of safety things. So, all right, let's look at the grounding or the LMR cable. So you can see from up here, now this is where my LMR cable comes down from the roof. So you can see the LMR 400 cable coming down from the roof and then coming over here. And then per what I said in my last video on the outdoor antenna, this is where um, I've put the loops on there. So they're called service loops. Um, that is the, the uh, correct term for them. Uh, it stands for extra cable. And then also I like it because it helps keep out the moisture. So that's uh that's what what it's being used for so what we're going to do though is right now this the lightning arrester is what comes is connecting the these two wires so i have one that's going into the wall so i could change out that cable anytime say something gets fried or or i want to lengthen the cable anything like that um, i can swap it out now because i've ran it just a uh, five foot cable in, inside the house for where the uh, miner is located so the lightning arrestor is right here and you can see that this is absolutely not advised for uh, there's no grounding or anything like that um, being done so you'll want to um, obviously not do this and i left it this way just for just very temporarily we had beautiful weather as you can see so i i put it up just to just to try this out um, for a couple of hours while i uh, figure out what else i need and got the parts that i needed to finish everything off so with that said, there's a lightning arrestor up here and I'm gonna try and zoom into that. So stand by here. So you can see that nothing is tied down right now. Let's see if I can get this right. Here is my lightning arrestor and then here's where it enters in the house. Now one thing that you'll want to do um, is put uh, I've seen pl plumber's putty. This is what this is right here. Plumber's putty wrapped around the LMR 400 cable as before it goes in. Um, one thing that also that you could um, experiment with is putting some caulk in there. And I would recommend that once you once you're settled on things, I wouldn't recommend doing this right away because if you ended up like me uh, the first time I did this, I got uh, a SMA connector instead of an RP SMA connector and so I had to get an adapter and all that kind of stuff so go first on the on the premise that you're gonna mess it up and then uh, if everything is working and it's the way you like it then go ahead and finalize it with that that caulking and and uh, the plumber's putty so that's what we're gonna be doing um, now I'll go up and, and show a little bit more about this I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see this Okay, so here's most likely how it will lay in. Um, at least this cable will be coming down here. I'll try to be anchoring as much as I can um, to put it on here. And then I'm gonna put some anchors in here as well. And then you can't really see it, but on the top side uh, is where a, um, a 10 gauge wire will come out and serve as the grounding for this lightning arrestor. And I'll probably come over this way with to the left with uh, to the grounding block. So I'm gonna put my grounding block up pretty high. Um, for right now, I could get some feedback that says that that's not where you should go, if it should be lower to the ground. Um, I appreciate some comments on that. I actually might even look that up in between. Uh, that said, I'm gonna have a, a separate video for reviewing this after I've installed everything, any other uh, gotchas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the only other thing that I wanna cover is that the water coming down as it comes down here if it's raining and such will come to get to this point and can't traverse up so then it will go down and that way it will protect the water the setup from getting any water in it same thing here is that it's going to have to come all the way down here and then try and come back up and it won't be able to so it'll drip down here so that's the, the setup to keep things out keep moisture out
So that is pretty much it for this video. Again, I will have a part two of this video soon, uh, just covering the actual install. Um, well, not the whole install, but I'll be doing a post-install video to show everything about how, how I um, got everything together and if there were any gotchas that I had. And then, of course, I'll look up those little things as well as far as how high the grounding block should be from the, from the, the ground or not. So thank you for watching. As always, uh, use your, your comments to ask questions. I uh, love to get your questions, love to get your comments, and yes, even your <laughs> critique of this setup. I always like to get the best information out there and I'm definitely not above taking down a video if I gave some really, really bad advice. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, I don't know, Send this to some, some friends. Help them get their setups going. Let's uh, let's keep mining that HNT. Take care.